When we came out of the, to the market, the favourite trip on a Sunday was to the muscle shop. It was famous. It was the one in the corner. It was famous. And the barrels was mobbed. It was mobbed. And the pattern was good. Even if you weren't spending money, it was a, a treat to come just to get a laugh. I've got champagne taste with your income. And, and I can get all the, all the good clothes over here, you know, good quality. That's what I'd like to say. And I'm not ashamed to say it. My auntie's ex-husband, he actually, he sold tobacco. Um, yeah, he was one of these ones, the police came and he'd go running. <laughs> my mum was from the Calton and so when I was raised, we came to the barrows like every single weekend because she, her granddad had a stall, so she was raised here. She later had a stall when she was a bit older. I think my, my granddad, her granddad's stall was um, cutting keys and selling pets, the obvious combination of the two. My mother, my mother actually knew Maggie McIver. Yeah, she knew her. Uh -huh. She knew her because the barrows, you know, started with hiring an actual barrow. Because when people were moving house, you couldn't hire a van. You didn't have the money to hire a van. Didn't have a van anyhow. So it was a barrow. Everybody put their stuff in a bar and away they went with And she used to hire out barras at six and a time. And that's when my mother knew. Hi. Yeah, my mum was at the barras is coming down here with my mum and my dad when I was eight year old when I had a memory. Uh, hot peas and vinegar and I first up on the way home and the barras was mobbed. My dad had me and my brother signs and my mother had my sister signs and we were a wee unit of blondes. And everybody in the bar is new us because we were like that. It used to sell toys, Barbie dolls. And, and then plants it was after that. And then it was plants. And there were no money in plants. And then went back to bicycles. Starting to be £30 up to £300. Now he sells genie, she's £70 ah. an hour. Aye, that'll be right. <laughs> that will be right. That's how you meet friends up the bar, know, isn't know, it? That's how me and James met. That's how me and James met a uh, year ago, uh, and we, his friend, and we all became friends. So we're coming up here ever since as a wee group uh, now, and we all go to wee Jimmy's stall, uh, just just there. So we've been friends for years, and that's what, uh, make, that's what makes it as well. Uh, so I've been coming here a long time. Um, used to come during the punk rock days. Uh, we used to come here and get our second-hand stuff as well, you know, our vintage gear and all that, a lot cheaper than the shops. And, and I, I live up the road in Denison and I'm a big believer in keeping the, the barras open and I think this is great, you know, I think it's wonderful because it's got to put the spotlight back in the barras. The people who come to me are from all walks of life. You've got your, your wee Jimmies, everybody's called Jimmy in the barras. Nobody's got a name, but um, the bar is so friendly, the stall holders, the, the people, I just love it. This is where you can unwind and have your cup of tea and your banter. But there's a warmth about it, and it might be quieter these days, but it's the, the warmth is always there. Leah's quite into vintage clothing and things like that now. She didn't realise that the stalls that were here, and her eyes just lit up when we came in. But So I'm sure we'll be back more often now that hopefully we're getting out of lockdowns and we can come back in, because we've not been able to travel to Glasgow for a while. Well, I worked at the People's Palace as a curator from 1974 to 1990. Virtually every weekend, my partner and I, Michael, shopped at the Barras for the People's Palace. And we built up a collection which we called the Barras Collection because no other way could we have got that. The Barras is the place that everything which is surplus in Glasgow, washes right through. Of course, when um, businesses were shutting down, sometimes all the stuff was um, resold through the barras. So um, when a local undertaker shut down, all the coffin dressing material uh, was at Frank's in the cartwheel, and he was selling it as curtains and bed. <laughs> oh, I've been going to the barras for, um, I'm 78 now. I've been coming to the Barras for was about 15, 16, 17, 18, and all that. I used to come for all the jewellery. In fact, it, it was 
Round about here, the, the woman had the jewellery, you know, the bangles and the rings and all that. She used to go to London, get stuff and all that, bring them up, and she got what I wanted. Myself and my four sisters, you know, we were, um, I'm the youngest of four, and every one of us has worked in one of the stalls, so we were here every Saturday, Sunday, we were here Christmas, you know, almost 24 hours, so it was, the barras at that point was, and I just remember it always being absolutely freezing. Um, I would be a wee girl, I'd be the youngest, I would be maybe nine or ten, and my dad was kind of a learning as the craft, you know, I've been down the barras having stalls. And I remember at times we used to have to go and sleep for a break under the stall. So we would have a blanket and a pillow and we would go under the stall, take, take turns each other having a break, you know. But um, it was very, very vibrant. It was a brilliant place to be. It's part of the, the whole character of Glasgow. You know, if it wasn't here, what would we have? You know, it would be just more flats and student, probably student accommodation. It's just always been the kind of heart and soul of Glasgow for me. I mean, I, I remember I did a thing for uh, BBC Scotland, funnily enough, where you had to choose your favourite place, your, your kind of happy place and your place to go to, and you can choose anywhere, and it was like Barbara Dixon and various people, and people were picking like Isla and, uh, <laughs> and all that, or places down south, you could choose, and we'll take you anywhere, and I said, oh, the bar is, uh, is where I want to go, and they were like, but you can't go anywhere and like, yeah, I, the, the bar is, the bar is in Barland place. That's where I've had some of the best days of my life and, and I love it. I'm a great granddaughter of Margaret McIver. There was Margaret McIver and her daughter was Margaret McIver, that's my granny. It passes down from generation to generation. They used to sell the stalls, but they don't sell them anymore. And then there was trees down the stairs. She had uh, material, because I used to buy it and make wee cushions. And that was like uh, calendars at the bottom. That's how I started off in the market. And then my my mum showed me how to crochet, and I made the baby hats. And I used to have a stall at the top there, and it was full of baby hats. I sold it the first weekend. That was the first time I made thirty pound. You, you don't realise, and that was a lot, a lot of money then. You know what I mean? Because my wages was only ten pound for the week. <laughs> well, you've actually got a spare chair in there called, I believe it's Janet's chair, because that's all she does is come and sit for hours. I keep threatening to charge her rent every time she appears. My place was in the first floor. There was two above, um, and it always looked empty. It was cheap, though, that's why people were there. Um, but my, mo my mother worked for a, a, a woman down in the main barras, and her name was Teresa. She sold material. One of her biggest customers was there every week was Lulu's mother. She was always buying material. Always buy material. The one thing, misconception, um, and it's always been there, was people always thought reputation that it was a den of iniquity or dishonest. I found people very honest in fact. I think the opposite of that. Because people, if you did something that wasn't quite right, your neighbours heard about it, you know, um, so you didn't do anything that wasn't quite right. It was always you know, very honest people. Uh, university of life, you know. Maybe, you know. I used to come up to the barrows with my grandfather um, and we I eventually found out that the reason why we got spoiled when we came up was because my grandfather, my grandmother was actually Helen McIver um, and she was part of the family so um, a lot of people knew my grandfather so he, it was always a great experience coming up. So then in later years um, when I was um, in my late teens and I was becoming more serious with my photography. Um, I used to think that the Barras was like the Disneyland for photographers. It was so much going on. How long have I been coming to Barras? God, since I was knee high to a grasshopper. I remember it all like when it had done that fantastical stuff, like a Acropodus and all that. <laughs> the blood running through the guy's fingers and he's selling the meat, you know? The meat packs and all that, brilliant. And the, the cartons and just the whole thing. That whole, it's the theatre of it. It's a pure performance. See, when you used to have people standing on stalls and they're shouting out for their business and they're saying, like, no five pound, no three pound, no two pound, no one pound, you know what I mean? And there's a guy coming around showing you a radio. And he's only got one, you know what I mean? And everybody's bidding up for it and all that and people knowing that. No, I mean, I'm just doing here to get out. Socialising. Socialising. Because I've a buddy, but I've a, I've a, all sorts of people in my store, Eskimos in my store, Eskimos. 
Ruskies, Ruskies. And then the pipe band contest across the road, all the Kilties come in. To Canada and all the rest of it. I've got some lovely people here. Like all the about, islands, Hawaiians. What I like about us when people talk about like, um, memory lane, or I'm going down memory, memory lane, it is actually a lane and it is memories because you hear the people coming down saying, my granny brought me here. So my mother was born in 1921, the year the bar was opened. Just up there in... Next uh, street, Stevenson Street. It's now called Bain Street, but it was Steen Street, and that's a picture of her and her, her wee sister. And they were very poor, so there was there was nine of them, and they lived up there on a single end. And right up until she died, she came to the bar as most Saturday. Well, I think for my mother, I always remember at Christmas, she would come down here and we would get her Christmases for here, and she'd bring stuff. On Christmas Eve, they would get real bargains in the barras. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she moved away, and my mother went on to have, she'd ten wains herself, my mother. Uh, and I'm the youngest, she had a wee boy after me, but he died. Mm -hmm. But she loved the barras, it was party, she had a real... Yeah. Current woman at heart, I suppose, the salt of the earth. Um, oh, she never missed it. Right up until yep. she died. Aye. Three days before my mother died, she was down here and she was almost 90, so she'd been coming all her life. She never stopped coming, and uh, I don't know, I think just the characters in it. And yeah, the, we knew um, everybody, you know. I feel close to my mum when I'm down here because she'd have walked all these streets, yeah. you know, and uh, I just, and I'm she, glad she, that I'm, I'm glad they're trying to. Yeah. Revive it. Well, I love to see all these young people. I know they're only drinking that, but they're coming. Aye. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, my mother used to. They used to hang their washing in the green, and they'd to play there all day in case somebody needed sheets. Because you'd come back and they'd be off. You know. Aye. Aye. But uh, it, it was uh, just characters. You know. It was marvelous. There's still a lot of characters in the band. Still a lot. Aye. Aye.